One of the things that we observe is that um, the idea of regeneration is gaining a lot of currency right now. Uh, it's suddenly a, a hot topic, and a lot of people are getting interested in it. And that's both very exciting and a very generative moment. But it also means that there's a lot of um, possibility for confusion uh, and also for kind of lowering the quality of discourse. And so how do we begin to really ask ourselves, what is regeneration about? Uh, because often it's understood, uh, I'll, I'll describe in a little later uh, a project that I'm working on right now, it's often understood to basically be an, a restoration process, that you regenerate an ecosystem by restoring it. You regenerate a river by restoring it. And one of the things that I want to propose is that's actually not regeneration, that's restoration. right? But if there's a difference, what is it? And how do we figure out what it is? So that's what I want to explore a little bit tonight. And uh, I'm going to do that through a framework. By the way, uh, let me just say a couple of minutes about who I am in Regenesis, because most of you have probably never heard of us. Uh, we're a small group in Santa Fe, New Mexico, based in Santa Fe. I split my time between Santa Fe and Berlin, Germany. And um, we've been working for We've been working in this field for many years, even before we formed Regenesis. We formed Regenesis 20 years ago to specifically take on how to apply regenerative thinking and develop regenerative thinking to the way human beings inhabit places, to the way we as human beings live on our planet was basically what our interest. And, um, but this, the, the uh, theoretical basis we come out of has a history of about 60 years. It was originally developed and used in very large business organizations. So it originally came out of business and then got hybridized, if you will, with uh, ecological design work. And so we call that hybridization regenerative development. And that is the work of Regenesis, is to figure out how to engage in regenerative development. And one of the basic frameworks that we use, which is a kind of universal framework, is a hierarchy. And I'm going to walk us up through the hierarchy. It's called levels of work. And uh, it's used in all kinds of contexts, including the context of place. Uh, and so the first level of work has to do with, if you think of a place or anything that you're working on as a living system, so these neighborhoods that you're talking about, or this region, this ecosystem, this city, the front range, whatever, however you want to think of it. If you think of that as a living system, there is on one level, that living system needs to be able to operate, right? Which means it needs to be able to maintain a harmonious relationship with whatever is receiving what it produces. And so uh, if you're a business, you're producing something that's going to go you know, to customers. If you're a city, you're producing something that not only serves your citizens, but also allows you to remain viable and meaningful in the world. If you're an ecosystem, you're, produ you're providing the habitat that all living things are able to coexist, but also evolve within. Okay? So that's the operate level of work. So uh, I, I made a last-minute decision that what I want to do is have you work again in your small groups at each one of these levels in the hierarchy just to play with it so it doesn't sound like an abstract thought. Okay? So think about, in conversation with the person next to you, think about what it means for the system that you were talking about before to operate well. What's involved in enabling it to operate well? And we'll only take about five minutes for this conversation, OK? So again, Jocelyn, I know a little bit about your project. What would it mean to be able to operate well in its context, right? which includes all of the stakeholders, but it also includes the communities that you're nested in and so on? OK? So have a five-minute conversation about that, and then we'll introduce the next level. So at the next level up, we talk about maintain level of work. And maintain has to do with, in, in a way, you were starting to segue there with your comments, that 
Um, as the entity that we're looking at um, is not isolated. It's actually part of something that's evolving in the world. Right? So this city is experiencing influx of people. It's experiencing, um, it's experiencing things evolving in the world of cities, uh, both in terms of policy, what's expected of cities. It's facing changes in the world with regard to, for example, climate change. Right? And what's coming down the road in terms of water, you know, energy, a whole array of issues that we're going to be facing. How well is the city able to maintain its effectiveness in the face of that constant evolution in its context? Right? That's what maintain level work is about. So again, just have a brief conversation with your neighbors about the implication of what I'm talking about in terms of what you've been having a conversation. I'm using the city as just an example. It's true at the project level. It's true for a university. You know, it's true for a program like Josie's. It's true for a business. Uh, a neighborhood cafe, for example, is operating within a continually changing context. And its ability to manage and evolve in response to those changes will determine whether it survives and maintains its effectiveness or goes into decline. Okay? So again, have a brief conversation just to get this a little more grounded in something specific, and then we'll go on to the next one. OK, so this next one, uh, these are like shorthand, obviously. Uh, this next one we call improve. And one of the things that's interesting about the first two, operate and maintain, and the next one, improve, is that we cross a, an invisible line. Uh, and, and this corresponds to that famous graphic of bills that you alluded to earlier, uh, that we're going from what exists, responding, you know, either managing what exists or responding to what exists, to actually working on the evolution of systems. That's what IMPROVE has to do with. So vi visualize for a moment what are some of the systems that Denver, if it were choosing to address itself to improving or evolving systems, not internally, but the systems, the larger systems that it is nested in, uh, what would it be working on? Right? So if this is a city that, for example, is fascinated by this concept of regeneration, of ecological design, you know, renewable energy, all of those things, what would you have to work on at the systems level to transform them? How, you would, how would you have to think differently? Yeah, yeah. So what does it mean to take the uh, resources, the intellectual and physical and economic resources of a city, for example, like this, and apply them to transforming systems at a much larger level so that those systems evolve their ability to generate value. The difference between this and the next level up, you can probably guess what the next level up is. If you're working on improving the value generation of a system, one of the most powerful ways to do that is to actually unleash the potential of every member of the system. That's another way of saying that what you're talking about. It's recognizing that every element in the system, whether it's a human being or a species or a forest or a river, a watershed, uh, they all have potential right, that is being either blocked or enabled. Right? So part of what it means to leverage uh, and improve the value generation in that system is to figure out ways to, un to unleash all of that. Right? And in a lot of policy thinking, actually, and even engineering thinking, goes directly in opposition to tapping the inherent potential of the system. It's odd, but it's kind of how we're trained. We're trained to, to think about them in terms of what is the way to best control or limit you know, variability in the system. And you'll notice that when we move from operate to maintain, we're already looking at how to be adaptable rather than always just trying to clamp down and keep things from varying.
There's always untapped, unrealized potential. And in a sense, that's what the regenerate level is trying to speak to, is how do we begin to look not just at how the system works, right, which is what you're working on when you're in, at the improved level, but who it is, right? Who it wants to be. Who is Denver, really, right? What is its, what is its unique role in the world? What is it called to be that it's not entirely conscious of? Uh, and how do you use, this goes to the story of place work, um, how do you use the recognition, learning about who Denver is to awaken the potential in all of the, the people who live here? You know, so that it becomes, it becomes not mechanistic, it becomes a sense of this is, this is where I live, this is where I belong, this is who we are as a people. And we are, we are the people of this place, and we have work to do. If you just pause for a second and think about the difference between working on a problem, yeah. just, think any, just think of any problem, and the kind of energy we put into solving them. Right? And what happens to the mind if I shift my attention off of the problem onto what is the inherent potential in the situation? It's, it's actually and literally a different mindset. It changes the way, it first of all changes the way you think, but it also tends to change the energy uh, and, and the will that you have to put into it. And one of, the, one of the values for me of a framework like this, this framework, by the way, doesn't necessarily say that one is superior to another. The, the basic premise behind this one is these all have to be working all levels of work have to be working for a system to be healthy. You know, if a system cannot regenerate itself, it will eventually die, right? It will go senescent and sort of fall asleep. And, and we've seen towns and communities and exciting projects and all kinds of things go through that process. Right? So it has to be able to regenerate itself if it's to make itself continually new and relevant in the world. And that's tr as true of a city or a nation as it is of an individual. So this is, it's a backdoor way of defining what we mean by regenerative. It's like beginning to build, oh, you know, most, the vast majority of the work that's going on out there that's currently being labeled regenerative is actually at one of these lower levels. Uh, not because it's not incredibly valuable work, but because it's not yet, you know, coming back to what is the source or the nature of the system that we're working in and using that to bring the system forward. Okay, so that for me, at least within the work that I'm doing, is the distinctive contribution of regenerative level of work. Uh, so what I want to do now is introduce uh, a couple of characteristics Again, we've wrestled with this for 20 years. This is like a current snapshot of one piece of our thinking that might apply. But we think these are really core characteristics of a regenerative nature of work. And uh, so there are four key concepts, let's say. The first one is wholeness, which I think there were several of you talking about this, that, that when you start dealing with parts, issues, you know, cr problems and so on, uh, you're, you drop out of being able to understand the wholeness of the situation, its systemic nature, and you start addressing a piece and that almost invariably leads to unintended consequences. The minute you focus in on a single piece, to the exclusion of all the rest of the whole, you, it almost invariably leads to things that are going to come back and bite you. So one of the challenges is to figure out how to work on holes. Right? And this is one of the things that there are a lot more people now beginning to talk about and explore. I think it's beginning to enter into the academic conversation. How really does one think about wholeness and be able to work from that? Uh, and a clue is that you stop working on problems because they will immediately take you down into the fragment. The second idea that for us is critical uh, to this concept of regenerative work is 
what we call nestedness. And nestedness refers to the fact that any living system is nested inside of other living systems and is itself made up of systems that are nested within it. Uh, and so by way of a simple example, uh, a cell operating within my heart, so it's in, within the organ of my heart, which is operating within a system, the circulatory system, which is operating within my body, which is in turn operating within a social context and so on, right, in a world. Right? So each one of those requires the others to live, right? That is, it, it makes no sense to have a heart if I have no cells, right? But the cell isn't coherent within a system like this unless it's part of an organ where it can function, you know, and play a role with all the other cells and so on. And so, again, there isn't a higher, there's a hierarchy of purpose and scale, but not necessarily of importance. Right? You can't have the smaller system without the larger and vice versa. The next one, we use the word essence uh, to describe this next key criteria or key quality. And um, by essence, we mean what, you, what is it that makes this uniquely what it is? What it, so I was using the example of what makes Denver, Denver? and not some other town, even town close by. Uh, that the, one of the ways of being able to get at the wholeness of something is to understand that it has a nature that belongs to it, that distinguishes it from anyone. So anyone in this room, we may all be human beings, but each of us is unique. Each of us is distinctive, right? And that quality that makes us distinctive is what we call essence. So in order to understand the whole, in one, one aspect of that is being able to understand what makes it whole, what causes it to be a whole. Um, I'll come back to this around the idea of place. And then the final one is potential, which I mentioned earlier, the difference between working on existence versus working on potential. One of the things that's interesting about potential is that um, the way we generally technically think about it uh, is that the potential of something arises from how well it nests within the larger systems that it's part of. So given its unique character, right, does it, uh, is it able to contribute value to the larger system that it's part of. So I, as an individual, am I able, my potential is in part determined by the context that I'm operating in. And I live up to my potential insofar as I'm able to make a contribution to that larger context. So going back to this example that we've been playing with around Denver, if Denver were to step up to some of the kinds of challenges that you were sort of lifting up, would it not, if it were made able to make a major contribution with regard to immigration or energy and climate or any of a number of other things that it could potentially work on, right, uh, it would begin to express more and more of its potential, the idea. And um, if it was able to do that from who it is, not as a generic American city, but as a unique American city, right, it would become, uh, the term we often use is non-displaceable. No one else can be Denver. They can try, but they're not going to be able to do it. So all of this relates to the question, Jocelyn, that you were raising at the beginning around how this relates to place. Um, actually, before I roar on, let me just pause here for questions or comments on this little piece of it. These are qualities that we see as really manifesting at the regenerate level of work. Um, well, one thing that just came to mind as you were talking, and maybe you can comment on this, is um, 
I was thinking about kind of the loss of essence in our world. The more globalized we become, I feel like um, many places are becoming the same as everywhere else um, because we we have so many influences around the globe and we bring them to our space and there's so many influences, like we bring all the influences here, other places bring all the influences we have there and I feel like sometimes you go into cities and all the cities are kind of just becoming the same because there's too many influences, there's too much globalization and everybody brings their own flavor and you lose the original flavor of the place. I feel like we're really losing essence in our world. And I, and then, you know, there's these great advantages of globalization, but at the same time, I feel like every place is becoming very much the same. I agree. <laughs> That's why I'm working on this. Uh, and I, well, another way of saying what you just said or commenting on it is we can no longer take the essence of our places for granted. We don't get essential by accident anymore. We have to do it deliberately. We have to do it through conscious, intentional effort. Um, and actually, you probably don't know this, but the reason I'm here tonight is that Josie and I are working over the next few months on a project called Story of Place in Fort Collins, where we're going to be working on exactly that. You know, how does one figure out, tease out, make explicit and conscious what's essential about this place. Not, not all of the kind of piled on habits and attributes, but the actual essential core of it. How do we learn how to do that so that we can reclaim it right? in the face of globalization and all the rest of it? OK, I've got sort of a line, so hang on. <laughs> well, I was a little confused when you talked about how developing potential is how well you are nesting because in a way that means to what you implied but I may be off really wrong is that the, the the way that you can facilitate a status quo is how you're meeting your your potential I mean that's sort of, sort of like what it sounded and I would like to see um, meeting potential to go beyond just maintaining the the structure or the nestedness of that system that you're talking about, but to explore other shapes, other structures, as a way that you really truly would be meeting your potential. Thank you. You unpacked the implication of what I was trying to say but failed to. That's exactly right. That that insofar as I can make a contribution to the evolution of the system that I'm working on, which is what you're saying. And that evolution, in turn, has to do with the role of the larger system in some larger system beyond it. So there's like this ripple effect, uh, which is kind of interesting. So let me say it again, because sometimes that sort of slips by really fast. My potential has to do with how well I help a larger system that I'm part of manifest its potential. And its potential has to do with how well it allows a larger system to manifest its potential. This is one of the reasons why leverage is possible. Right? That I can work on a very intelligently identified node, right? and through doing a really good job there, have an effect that ripples out through multiple systems. And they talk of that, about that in terms of system multipliers, one sometimes the language people use for it. So I can have a, an effect that goes far, far beyond the specific thing that I'm working on. And this is how you get beyond a kind of Newtonian universe, right? <laughs> it's like it's possible to work on something small and have a global impact if you pick the right thing and work on it well enough. So I think that was all in what you were trying to lift up. Can you clarify on the last slide, You, the very last thing you said was a lot of uh, people or organizations, whatever, think that they're doing regenerative work, but maybe they're really doing improve or something else and that they're not doing regenerative work because they're not going back to the source? Yeah, so I'll give, so that this is an example of what I mean by that. I watched this happen on a specific project in, in California that was groundbreaking project back in the 70s yeah. and uh, created, um, you know, really incredible integrated kind of village setting it was a development project, and uh, it was 
gorgeous and you know people loved living there and it was um, and there was a kind of coherent social cohesion there that lasted for decades and uh, so at one point I was working with the Native American community and I said and they were wanting to build something similar so I said let's go out and visit this place so we all went out there and we got there and the place was falling apart and the person our tour guide started talking about you know the the battles going on among the neighbors the uh you know how all of the kind of key infrastructure that had been put in to make this place work was now contested ground people wanted to pave things over because they needed more parking and this was inconvenient and da 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 da, da. and um this place was which had been like a world model you know prince charles came to look at it in the 80s and that kind of thing uh, this place was like going down fast, right? There had been a generational change, and the people who'd come in with the original vision had died or moved on or whatever. And um, and this this Native American, these young Native American people that I was with sort of looked at each other and said, wow, they've lost their way, basically. They've lost their soul, because it never occurred to them that the soul of the place, its meaning, needed to be regenerated from one generation, from one year to the next and one generation to the next. And without that, you know, build it and they will come just does not work, ultimately, right? You have to actually invest yourself in it. You have to keep its meaning alive. And that's, that's what distinguishes regenerative work. It's not the tinkering. It's, you know, the, the technologies can be fabulous. And there's, this is not implicitly or explicitly, there's no criticism. There's brilliant stuff going on out there. At all kinds of levels, financially and, and economic design and tooling around with capital and tooling around with urban design and social design, you name it. There's brilliant work going on there. But if it loses its attachment to where people derive meaning, it cannot be sustained. Right? Or, or it can only be sustained by being imposed on people. It can't actually unleash their potential.